Thanks for joining us at Right On Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Time Machine Mark II from the Back to the Future 2 movie. It's a 125 scale Polar Lights model kit, number POL925. It's a 125th scale, enlisted as a skill level 2, because even though it's a snap kit, it does require some paint for finishing. The model includes 62 parts molded in gray, clear chrome, a brushed steel finish, and has vinyl tires. It's kind of a re-release, as the earlier movie version was released without the steel finish, but Polar Lights has also updated the moldings for the Back to the Future 2 movie, and was with previous versions, this one includes the original plutonium reactor as well as the lightning rod Mr. Fusion. So you could build either version from this kit. And the hover version is also included with this one and has a stand to allow it to float. Now the build is simple, but the painting is tedious and detail specific. If you go to the internet and download some reference photos, you can really add some detail to this kit. The only decals that come with it are the license plates, and there are both decals and stickers of those items. The overall dimensions are 7 inches in length, 4 inches in width, and a rolling 3 inches uh, high as well as a 5 inch high hovering stand. This kit comes with both license plates, stickers, and decals, so you can take your pick on which style of emblem you want to add to your license tags. As always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction, I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue, but other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. This build starts with the dashboard but there are no decals included for the gauges, and they're kind of empty blanks. But if you Google DeLorean Back to the Future 2 dash instruments, you'll find some that you can use to print out on a color printer, cut out and apply to your dash. Paint the dash gray, the wheel black, and the clock gold. The components on the dash are painted from left to right, black, black, white, red, and red, with the wires in multiple colors. Then add the instrument panel, time circuits, and plutonium gauge decals, if you made some out. Or paint those details into the dash, and then install the wheel and add the clock. The interior is assembled in multiple steps. Pull out these parts that you'll need, and paint them gray, and then the details will be added. The rear panels on the interior tub is flat black. The aft section of the console is painted silver on the time controller, and black on the shifter. Then add some colors to resemble wires at the time controller, and the seats can be added into place now. Detail the back panel now. There are multiple online sources and resources for the photos, so the actual part in the kit is simplified from the real item. I painted the control boxes behind the passenger seat black with gold highlights. The flux capacitor is white with a black case surrounding it, and the circuit board behind the driver's seat is silver. Add some gold to the small part beside that, and silver to the canisters. Now the detail as you see fit uh, can really just be whatever you like uh, or you can use some online references. Now we can finish installing the interior parts, add the dashboard in place and install the rear panel then snap the door panels to the dash floor and rear panel. Just for fun I found a scale copy of the Hill Valley Telegraph newspaper with the clock tower story from the movie. I sized it as needed and printed it out on some regular paper I'll fold it up and glue it onto the seat for a little detail. Detail paint the rear panel um, however you see fit. There's a lot of references online. I just did a simplified version using some silver and red, blue and green. Um, paint the two parts of those tubes on the left uh, on the passenger side green. Assemble them and add them into place. Now you see the logo and the copyright script here. Use a hobby knife uh, and some sandpaper to remove the logo from polar lights and then um, you can just wipe the uh, copy script clean with some lacquer thinner. You can highlight as much of this as you like. Um, for the movie it was mostly black for filming purposes though. Now flip the chassis pad uh, over and uh, snap the interior tub into place where it uh, is positioned. 
While the body is molded in color, we'll still need to add some painting to make it look like it should. The rear bumper is black, the rear panel is gray, the inner rear panel black, as well as the side moldings and the lower side panels. The front nose panel is gray, and the front bumper, spoiler, and grill are black with a silver DMC logo. Now the wires on the sides uh, are red and gray, and the cowl and wipers are black, and the mirrors are black, as well as the rear window vents. Here's the finished paint, uh, including the black sections and the uh, gray uh, uh, rear and front fascia. So pull out the uh, window glass and the roof console. The side window also has a small black molding that is black. And the console is gray and black with uh, some silver highlights on the buttons and white uh, on the side. Now snap the windows into place and add the console into place. Now we can install the chassis section into the body. Start at the rear uh, at a 45 degree angle and just kind of shoehorn it down uh, spreading the sidewalls slightly. It'll snap right into place. Now pull out the parts for the rear wiring harness assembly uh, and the brakes and um, the brake lights are supposed to be uh, black inset with uh, red lenses and white uh, backup lights so I dechrome the uh, lights in some light bleach, you know, just set them in there and let them uh, float for a while. The chrome will come off. Then paint the framework black and the lens area is stoplight red with the uh, inner line of lenses uh, white for the backups. Now the framework is gray on the wire assembly and the lower connectors are blue gray and the wires are red. The upper connectors are blue gray with silver and black components. Install the tail lights and you can add your license plate now too. Now snap the lower panel into place and then the top panel onto the roof and then add each side panel lining up the tabs of the top and bottom to them. Now get out the parts for the front wiring harness panels. Install the side parts to the wire panel and then install the headlights using some clear glue or white glue and then use a little of that white glue to create a film on the lights for a little more realistic looking lens. Paint the wire panel gray uh, with blue gray connectors on the ends and the wires that are onto the added parts are black. Uh, that's the uh, bluish uh, panel there. And then install the front wire panel to the car. Pull out these parts and paint the exhaust units flat black and add them into place and then the louvers, the internal louvers for that uh, are installed in place and they snap into the rear panel. The lines are painted steel and they run from the outside of the exhaust to the back panel of the car. Now for your build you choose between the plutonium intake that includes the lightning rod conversion or Mr. Fusion intake. I opted to use the Mr. Fusion for the hovercraft version and so I painted the base aluminum, the center mount black and the Mr. Fusion unit white. The lines are steel. To install Add the Mr. Fusion intake into the area between the exhausts. One line runs from the base of the intake to the back panel of the car. Now the other line is a jumper uh, from each side of the parts uh, that the intake sets in between. Now on to the wheels. The tires are assembled next. And note that there are smaller tires for the front. They are not as wide. So to give the tires a road worn look I, I kind of turn the um, tread on some fine sandpaper. Just press and roll them to rough it up and it looks more realistic that way. Now the backing plates are different for the front rear also uh, as you'll see here and the backing plates are painted flat black. Install the rims uh, into the tires and there are some small rims for the front and large rims for the rear. The tires are non-directional so um, there's no markings on the sidewall so they can go on either side but then add the proper backing plates to the wheels. For the uh, hover version, the, uh, the mounts are installed onto the tires for that and if you decide to make your car the rolling version you'll need to source the metal axles from some places. This kit uh, does not include them. So paint the hover mounts and then uh, flat black and then after they've dried you can snap uh, a tire onto each mount. Now just match up the fronts and rears uh, to the proper locations and snap the, uh, the hover mounts into the chassis now where they, normally the axles would go.
Now gather the pieces for the display stands for the car in hover mode, uh, assemble them uh, and paint those flat black. Now here is a front view of the completed Mr. Fusion time machine and here is a rear view of the uh, vehicle. Here's all the parts that you should have left over, uh, one of the intake units and the uh, extra tags that go in the license. Well there you have it. Now. While this is a simplistic kit on the surface, because it's mostly snap, it still requires some pretty fairly uh, intensive detail painting, which makes it a great transition kit for the intermediate modeler. But the kit itself, what great subject matter. It's a hovercraft. Uh, when I saw those tires roll out and the car hover to uh, take off into a new time dimension, what a thrill that was. But anyway, on this kit, you won't have much trouble putting it together, but you can take it as far as you want. Uh, it's pretty detailed. The body is straight. The, um, the stainless steel finish is actually pretty close to reality. Um, it might be a little dark, but if you added some extra wires and components to this, uh, what a great looking model you could have uh, if you wanted to really extend it. But anyway, just as it is, it's a great addition to your shelf and up on the stands it looks like she's ready to go again. We hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review and so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, which you can find us on Facebook and also at our website www.writeonreplicas.com. Thanks!